So we now come to the, one of the key turning points in American history, the coming of emancipation, you might say, during the Civil War. Now, just as with many other aspects of American history, the study of slavery, the study of the Civil Rights Movement, many other things, the question, what is the proper time frame for talking about the end of slavery? Is it the Civil War? Is that where we should be focusing on? Some scholars are now looking at what you might call a long emancipation, just like there's a long civil rights movement, also a long emancipation, starting with the American Revolution, maybe, starting with the gradual ending of slavery in the northern states in the aftermath of the American Revolution, including slaves running away before, in the decades before the Civil War, um, people getting out of slavery in one form or another well before the Civil War. So in other words, it was this, and then a long abolitionist movement, which ebbed and flowed, but certainly existed from the time of the Revolution all the way up. The value of that is that it doesn't just focus on the war years, the, and, and you could expand it. What is the proper geographical frame? The Western Hemisphere, the abolition of slavery in the British Empire, the abolition of slavery in the Spanish, uh, in, the, in the nations that became independent in the early 19th century out of the Spanish Empire in Central and South America. So this is a large-scale process. It doesn't take place at one moment. Certainly, nobody would claim the Emancipation Proclamation in and of itself is the end of slavery. The problem with this long approach is it can easily lead into a teleology, right? There's a kind of a, just a, a, a pathway leading to inexorably toward the end of slavery. And the fact is, and I've said this before, but we have there were more slaves in the United States in 1860 than at any other point in our history. Slavery was not dying out. It was not going away. There were more slaves in the Western Hemisphere than at any other point in the history of the Western Hemisphere. Even though it had been abolished in some places, it was growing and thriving in other places. So we certainly should not see this as a straight line toward the end of slavery. Between 1834, when the British emancipation begins, and 1888, when Brazil finally abolishes slavery, the last nation in the Western Hemisphere to do that, over that 50-some-odd year period, some six million slaves were freed in the Western Hemisphere. Of those, four million were in the United States. In other words, emancipation in the United States dwarfs any other ending of slavery in the history of the Western Hemisphere. Um, it dwarfs it in magnitude, in scale. Of course, it's different also. The United States is different from other places in the ratio of, slave, of the slave to the white population. If you take the United States as a whole, the slaves are a small minority of the population. Even in the South, they're a minority of the population as opposed to the West Indies where there are considerable, the slaves and black people were a considerable majority of the population. The in the United States, as in Haiti, but the, the end of slavery came as a result of a devastating war. And then, as we'll see, only the United States had this period afterwards of radical reconstruction. An effort, did not succeed, but an effort to incorporate these former slaves as equal members of the society with significant political power. Um, so that's what we're talking about today. This, the, not, slavery doesn't end on January 1st, 1863, but that is the pivot of the story of the end of slavery, in my opinion anyway, in, um, in the United States. But for that to happen, we have to go back to where we left off the war.